Lately, I've been checking out the Godox Magic X-T1. It's a two-channel wireless lav mic system with some kind of genius design elements and features. The price is absurdly low too, and having reviewed some similar products recently, I wanted to see how this stacks up in a highly competitive market. So what are its features that make it magic? How's the build quality? What's the user experience like? Most importantly, does it sound any good? As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video, so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers, and it would really make my day if you could just take the time, if you haven't already, to just reach down and hit that subscribe button. Um, means a lot to me, it helps the channel, and I thank you in advance. Now, I'm not gonna keep this Magic X-T1. I'm actually gonna give it away to one of my Patreon backers. The way that my Patreon works is any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel to buy this kind of thing, and then I give the gear to my backers once I've reviewed it. If that's of interest, do check it out. The link is below and you can enter to win and all that kind of good stuff. We're gonna kick off with the features first, but please note, um, I may switch between this and my normal mic, which I just keep above me. In fact, it's there. Uh, I actually hide it, and if you want to see how I do this trick, um, that's another video and that will be linked. So this is a two-channel unit. You get two wireless mics and a receiver unit, which fits snugly into your hot shoe in your camera, and the receiver unit doubles up as a charging case, and this is just such smart design. Spec-wise, this operates at 2.4 gigahertz, which is kind of, tends to be good for longer range operation, and Godox say this has a range of 200 meters, which is not, it wouldn't be, if true, class leading, but you know, we'll see. Audio quality wise, we're looking at 24 bit and 48 kilohertz, which are very kind of standard, sensible bit depths and sample rates to work with. It just means that, you know, when you get the files into your editor, you're gonna have some reasonably robust files to work with and, you know, do some tweaking. It has a signal to noise ratio of 70 dBA, which is, um, for this kind of mic, not bad at all. Uh, I would expect a kind of studio quality microphone to be better than 75. Basically, the higher the number, the better uh, in terms of its uh, self noise. For example, the microphone that I've got on my Rode stand that you can see behind me, that's the AKG C414. XLS, and that has a signal to noise ratio of 88 decibels, so really good, and actually sort of 18 decibels less self noise than this. There are three recording modes. There's mono, which records to both left and right channels on your device. There's uh, stereo for when you want to use both microphones. And then there's a safety mode, which is how I'm using it right now. And that records one at the volume that you set it at and another at minus six decibels, just in case. This is a really handy feature. And I would advise that if you ever find yourself using just one of the microphones, always use the safety mode. It has a high pass filter, which is useful for kind of filtering out the sort of super low frequencies. It's set at 150 Hertz, which is higher than I would expect to see from most microphones with their kind of inbuilt um, high pass filters. And um, it's useful nonetheless, it's just a bit higher than I'm used to. The receiver has a really nice touch screen display, which I will show you in just a minute. But uh, just for now, I'll say I found it really just intuitive to use. There's a 3.5 millimeter headphone out for monitoring, which is really handy. You can also connect the Magic X-T1 to a computer via USB and use it like an audio interface, as well as to your phone. Godox say you get 16 hours battery life as a complete unit, and I've just got back from two days of filming where I exclusively used this microphone system uh, over the two day span, and it didn't, I don't think it got below maybe 60% battery, so I completely believe that it could reach 16 hours and maybe even surpass it if you're careful with the way you use it. Anyway, now let me show you what you get in the box. And here it is, the Godox Magic X-T1 in its tiny little box. In the case, you get a few different cables. You've got the charging cable, the 3.5 millimeter one, and one for plugging into your phone. You also get a cold shoe mount. You get spare magnetic plates, which is really handy. A couple of dead cat attachments for when it's windy, and then some more magnetic clips. So plenty of options for attaching it to a subject. And then we have the unit itself, which, you know, as I mentioned, this is a super clever design. It's a receiver and charging case in one. You can just unclip it to access the microphones, pop them back in and they start charging. What's not to like about that? 
Switching on the display is pretty nice and clear. The microphones just automatically connect, so that's really handy. And to navigate the menu system, it's very intuitive because it's it's the same way you would on, say, an Apple Watch or even your phone. It's all the same swipe gestures that you would use. Something I noticed is the little magnetic plates on the microphones are insanely powerful. It's actually kind of hard to pry them off the microphones, but this is a good thing. It means they're just gonna be secure if you're using them on, say, a subject's clothing. And that's kind of it. I like that there's not too much stuff with this. Often you get tons of peripherals and just a pouch to put them in. Everything here fits inside the case and I like that. Moving on to build quality and it's almost entirely plastic, so there's that. But overall, it seems well made, especially when you consider the bargain price. The form factor, I think, is fantastic and a real strength of the X-T1. It fits snugly in a hot shoe with nothing to tighten as it has rubbery bits and it flips up to reveal the mics. It's just super convenient and a little bit genius. The mics are just eight grams each, so not very much at all, and the receiver unit is 50 grams, so it doesn't add a huge weight to you know your bag or onto your camera if you keep the receiver there. I would say, for my taste, the branding is a little too prominent, in particular on the mics and the magnetic bits. Bearing in mind, there's a high likelihood of one of these two things being visible whilst filming. And so you can't really escape the branding. Like here, you can see the orange chi, it kind of stands out a bit. So some lower key branding, I think, would have been appreciated, at least for the items of the kit that would be visible on screen. Next onto the user interface and user experience side of things, and I have to say I found the touchscreen interface to be kind of flawless. Navigating the menu is really intuitive and from first taking the X-T1 out of its case to hitting record and getting decent results took just a minute, maybe two. And yeah, here we are. I'm, uh, I'm quite a way away in this uh, gorgeous country estate in the southwest of England where I live. Uh, not here, I don't live here. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping there's no uh, breakup on the audio if it's actually reaching this far. It is quite far away. Um, in fact, I wonder if I go behind a tree and see what this does. I'm going over here. And Studio Half here, I have to interrupt and say this was the breaking point for the Magic X-T1. The huge, thick tree and the distance was just too much. So this is what the Magic X-T1 sounds like with my preferred position of centre chest. I've got the noise reduction off, because I'm, I don't need it right now. And I've got the low cut off as well, so you're, you're hearing the, the full spectrum that this can capture. And then this is what it sounds like with the low cut switched on. It does cut out, from what I, I hear anyway, quite a bit of that sort of chesty uh, bass frequencies that you can hear. I don't know, better or not? Something I really like doing with lav mic audio, as I'm not a huge fan overall of the way most of them sound, is to run them through a piece of software like Logic and do some really good adjustments. And you're gonna hear this very clip again after I've done some editing. So uh, let me show you what I do, because you know the difference can be incredible. Run it. Now this is quite a special technique that I demonstrated in one of my videos called How to Vastly Improve Your Lav Mic Audio. So do check that video for the full walkthrough. But just to show you how to do this quickly, I'm using Final Cut, but this should be the same in most video editors. I'm gonna right click the clip and select Reveal in Finder. Just find it and then drop it into my audio editor of choice. And for me, it's Logic. I only want the audio to extract, so I don't want the video. I'm gonna uncheck that. And there we have it. And then on to improving the audio. I'm gonna go quickly past this because like I said, there is a full video showing you how to do this. Basically, I do a low cut at the sub frequencies and then I apply a de just to tackle the S's. Then I do some fairly subtle compression just to even things out a little bit. And then the most important plugin and that's called Match EQ, which is a built-in Logic plugin. And I let the plugin learn what the sound of the current audio clip sounds like 
like. And then I drop in a reference track and it has to be something that sounds really good. So often I'll use some of the condenser mic audio from my videos. In this case, I'll be using the audio from this very video. So I drop that in, Match EQ learns it again, it analyzes it and then compares the two and then it generates an EQ curve to make them a hell of a lot more similar. The effect that this is gonna have is profound. And lastly, I add a limiter. This is a fancy one. You definitely don't need a fancy one. And that's just to make sure that the output level is correct. So now let's check out the before and after. You're going to hear this very clip again after I've done some editing. So uh, let me show you what I do because you know the difference can be incredible. Run it. You're going to hear this very clip again after I've done some editing. So uh, let me show you what I do because you know the difference can be incredible. Okay, so it's time to test the dynamic noise reduction and it's off at the moment and I'm just going to play some music. This is a secret song. Uh, you'll hear it. It's relatively loud. I'm hoping this is going to come through on the microphone and then I'm just going to engage the DNR and see what difference it makes. Let's do it. And now I have the DNR on. Does it work? It's pretty loud in here. I really, I'm really a little doubtful. And in the past, I've not liked the sound of DNR. So I don't know, what do we think? Next onto value for money and alternatives. And I would say there are almost too many options in this kind of price band for this type of product. Um, I'll pop some of my best recommendations in the comments section. And I would also recommend checking out my recent video about the Hollyland Lark M2. The Lark M2 costs more and probably has the slight edge in terms of sound quality, but the XD1 has some serious user experience perks and I would say is better value overall. It's a good time to be a buyer for this kind of product. Anyway, now on to my pros and cons and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. The receiver doubles up as a charging case. I love this, it's such a smart design. It's really small and lightweight. It doesn't add any weight to your bag. What's not to like there? It's also really convenient with all of the aforementioned points. And this is a big deal for me and I know will be for many users. The user interface is also really intuitive and I know Again, this contributes to that convenience factor. This is certainly a no manual required product. I love the value of this. It really is just a lot of kit for really not very much money. And then the cons, and it has a plastic construction, but you know, that is kind of appropriate for this price point. There's no internal storage, but again, that's kind of understandable given the price. Slightly lower key branding would have been appreciated at the very least on the mic units. Finally, to my opinion, and I know it's a really Really crowded market but to me the Magic X-T1 feels like it's priced just slightly too low you know don't get me wrong I'm not complaining and you know regular viewers of the channel know how much I love a bargain you just get so much for your money these days with this type of product but I would say what really separates the Magic X-T1 is the user experience side of things where Godox have been really thoughtful and I think they've nailed it. Having that receiver double up as the charging case and then in theory it could just live in your hot shoe on your camera, I think that's just so, so nice to have. And I love it when products just kind of get out your way and uh, just let you create. Other than that, I think I'd summed it up pretty well in my pros and cons. If I were to go looking for something more than this, I would be looking to get an upgrade on the sound quality side of things. And um, no, I'm not saying that this sounds bad at all. It's, it sounds pretty good, but it's just that I am of an, <laughs> I'm of an audio background where this kind of sound uh, is my bag. And uh, you know, that's kind of what I strive to, to find and, and achieve with my videos. I should also say I have a little bias in that front anyway. I'm, I'm really, I've never been that into the sound of lav mic audio in general. I just find um, the way that they're positioned I find that a really unnatural way to hear someone's voice because, you know, usually we hear a combination of what comes out of the mouth, what comes from the throat and the chest. And this positioned usually in the center of someone's chest, it's, it's just not where you'd normally hear someone's voice. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Do you, you agree? What did I miss? 
What's the best of this type of product that you've ever tried? Please let me know, I am interested and um, I'll see you in the comments section. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and videography, of which Google's algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.